Coming up on Ag Week TV, we'll detail the agricultural aid in the COVID relief bill. President-elect Biden makes more cabinet picks of importance to the ag community. We'll have the outlook for grain and livestock markets in 2021. A Southeast Minnesota cheese plant is making a big expansion this year. And we'll tell you about a premium vodka made from sugar beets. Welcome to Ag Week TV and Happy New Year. I'm Michelle Ruck. Congress passed a $900 billion COVID relief package before the holidays, which includes $13 billion for agriculture. It contains $3 billion of direct support for livestock, poultry, and dairy producers, and $5 billion for row crop farmers. There's an indemnity for farmers that euthanize livestock due to supply chain disruptions, as well as ethanol producers hit by a drop in demand. Plus, there's funding for small meat processors to attain federal inspection due to increased demand. President-elect Joe Biden continues to assemble his leadership team and has picked an experienced but not widely known state regulator to be EPA administrator. Michael Reagan heads North Carolina's Department of Environmental Quality and made a name for himself by pursuing cleanups of industrial toxins. He is described as fair and someone who makes science-based policy decisions. With a focus on reducing greenhouse gas emissions, Reagan will play a key role in determining the future of biofuels. We don't for sure where he's going to stand, but hopefully they'll, they'll take a look at what all the advantages of renewable energy and the use of them. Biden has also selected New Mexico Representative Deb Holland as Interior Secretary and says she rounds out an experienced team ready to tackle climate change. Sign up for the General Conservation Reserve Program begins January 4th and will last about six weeks. USDA will release the details on CRP rental rates soon and there is room for producers interested in enrolling. We have quite a few acres coming out this next year as well. Not as many as we had last year, but quite a few. Uh, so there is room uh, and we're well below the cap as well. Northeast says the cap is 27 million acres, but there may be fewer farmers interested in CRP in 2021 with higher grain prices. 2020 has been a roller coaster for the grain markets, starting as a pandemic-induced bear market and then turning into a demand-led bull market, especially soybeans. So what's ahead for 2021? Dwayne Bussey and Jim McCormick join me with the outlook, starting off with how much USDA needs to adjust soybean exports, crush, and ending stocks in the January report. Well, right now, I guess you'd have to say demand is, is showing that we have to raise exports 75 million, I'd say, and crush, I'd say 10 to 15. Jim, are we going to run out of beans? We're not going to run out of beans, but it's going to make it very, very tight. I 100% agree with Wayne. You're, you're going to see the carryout drop, I think, below 100 million when it's all said and done. Will they do it all in January? Probably not. I fully believe we'll be importing beans. It's interesting. We sold some beans to Brazil. I would guess when it's all said and done, we'll be importing some beans late summer to try to bridge this gap because plain and simple, there's just not enough beans in the world to feed this Chinese demand at the moment. And uh, I believe that means the market's going higher because we got to knock some of that demand out of the market and essentially ration demand. So the unknowns that we have, guys, are, first of all, how much more will China buy, especially in the February time period? And Dwayne, the other unknown is South American weather. What happens with the crop there, right? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think we all know they, they've been just dry enough. We can probably start trimming off those record high numbers we were projecting earlier in the year. Uh, but they are getting, you know, scattered rains every once in a while. So I don't think it's a disaster, but we can't afford a disaster right now, Michelle. And honestly, if it was this big high record number out of Brazil, like our early estimates, I wouldn't be that worried about it. And I don't think the soybean market should either. In fact, like Jim's pointing out, we need them in a demand-driven market. So let's talk about price targets. Where do you think we need to go to start rationing demand? I think we've got to go to $15 beans when it's all said and done. I think a minimum, when you look at the stocks use falling where they are down near 3%, historically, that's the broad beans back up near 15, accentuating the problem, the bullish end. I'm looking at is the U.S. dollar. It's below the 100-day move, 100 moving average for the fall, first time in multiple years. I think that just kind of gives that currency break to those importers around the world. So I think 15 is a minimum target at this point in time, unless something really tragic happens on the demand front that I'm not expecting. Corn has to continue to follow soybeans here to bid for acres, obviously. 
But does corn have enough of its own demand story to kind of push that market as well? Well, a lot of it could depend on China at this point in time. You know, how many bushels of corn are China are truly going to need? Our best guesstimate at a minimum, they bought at least 19 million metric tons of corn. You've heard a lot of private estimates say they've got to buy 25 to 30 million metric tons of corn. So if China continues to buy like that, plain and simple, our carry, carryout is going to drop, I think, below 1.5. And that will keep corn kind of in a ratcheting mode. I do think the beans are going to be the leader. And then we get into next spring, it's really going to be a battle for acres. So the other side of the demand equation, Dwayne, is the ethanol industry. Basically, gas demand slowing down, which is going to slow down ethanol production. Does USD have to make adjustments going forward on that? I, I don't think right away here in this January report, we're not that far off the current projections. Yeah, the, the ethanol picture isn't rosy right now. That's kind of the stepchild uh, in the supply and demand table right now, but it's not, it's not horrible. It'll be all right. So Jim, if we do get into the corn soybean acreage battle here, how much higher do corn prices have to go to get enough acres? Honestly, Michelle, that's a hard, you're asking a really hard question because it really depends on how high price beans go. I mean, if you keep, if you get beans into the teens, you know, I think beans are going to be attractive to a lot of producers. Uh, Dwayne, your thoughts, is there a lot more upside potential in the corn market and corn prices? It, yeah, there is. And Jim nailed it because of uh, sharply higher soybean market, corn will follow. Now, when it comes to the corn market, I'm not nearly as bullish as I am soybeans. The stock to use ratio is tight, but it's just not as tight as soybeans. I had targeted once we got up to this 440 in March corn, I started scale up selling from there, the old crop. And as far as the new crop goes, I, I'm anywhere from the same 420 area where we started, you start to sell it. I would scale up selling to that 475, 474 area as a producer, just because I, I don't think right now we're in a situation where we're going to have to ration demand. So let's talk about the wheat market. There's not much of a story right now because the Northern Hemisphere's crop is pretty much in dormancy. So what do you see ahead here? Is just wheat a follower of corn and soybeans for the next couple months? I, I see wheat as being a follower. You nailed it with uh, once wheat goes into dormancy in the Northern Hemisphere, that, that bullish story kind of went away that Russia's got a poor crop. Any price targets or projections for wheat? I think you can probably see maybe go 50 cents higher, maybe a little bit higher. It's going to struggle, like like Dwayne said. We're gonna, it's going to be the laggard throughout the winter. It, you know, we're going to follow the beans and then the corn and then the wheat. But I don't, I said the spring wheat, you know, it's going to have a battle for acres. So I, I would look for the wheat market to continue to find a little bit of strength. Ahead on Ag Week TV, a Minnesota distillery is making vodka out of a local crop. When it comes to grain storage and handling solutions, one call does it all. Gateway Building Systems, the number one Brock bin dealer in the U.S., is locally owned and provides turnkey convenience with factory direct product, complete design services, and in-house construction. Now is the perfect time to take advantage of discounts on Brock solid bins, grain dryers, and aeration systems. For more information, go online to gatewaybuilding.com or call 1-800-747-4499. This is Dennis Beliski reminding you, we do auctions and we do them well. You've built your operation with hard work and when it's time to sell, all or part, you deserve the best. Details from repairs and preparation to promotion and settlements are not routine. Chances are you'll only do this once, so we'll tailor an auction just for you and get it done right. On site at your farm or added to one of our highly successful Alaris Center auctions, we have the skill, reputation, and integrity to meet your needs with best-in-class commitment and quality service. Find us at resourceauction.com or call 701-757-4015. With the success of the Case IH Diger Quad Track and Magnum Road Track tractors, it's no secret why Case IH is the leader of the track. So it wasn't surprising when the competition started imitating us. But only Case IH offers a five axle design to give you a smoother ride, more power to the ground, with less burning and compaction. Still, we're flattered. In fact, if we weren't already red, <laughs> we'd be blushing. Small or large, Superior Grain Equipment has a storage solution for you with a wide variety of bin options and accessories, along with site planning and superior customer service. Plus, from top to bottom, we offer the industry's best bins and warranties to protect your products and your grain storage investment. Get superior quality, protection, and reliability with generations of experience and dependability. Make the superior choice today with Superior Grain Equipment.
Ag Week brings you timely agriculture news from field to fork in digital, print, and television. Fresh every week, join Jenny Schlecht from the Ag Week editorial team and me, Al Windmill, from the sales and marketing team for a deeper dive into farm and ranch stories, along with guest interviews with personalities from the world of agriculture. If you're involved in farming, ranching, or agribusiness, the Ag Week podcast is the show for you. Welcome back. Normally this time of year, many of us toast the holidays with friends and family. And it's also the biggest time of the year for a premium vodka made from local sugar beets. But as with so many things, the pandemic has beet vodka looking toward the future. Rose Dunn has more. First one in Minnesota, one of the very, very few in the United States. Ben Breezoff thought he was going to open a craft brewery, but when he had an idea to make vodka out of sugar beets, he knew he was on to something. At the time said, um, you know, the craft beer industry is really saturated. There's a bunch of breweries, uh, distilleries, very, very few. So we um, kind of had the light bulb moment and said, let's create a, another social locally made spirit or, or drink, I should say. And, and that was a, a spirit, a, a vodka made out of sugar beets. Since he was in the nation's top sugar beet growing area, it made sense. Originally, they tried to make beet vodka from raw sugar beets that they hauled down from the Red River Valley to the Twin Cities but it didn't go the way they hoped. By the time we got them down, they had already half decomposed. They were really dirty. We couldn't clean them properly. We were trying to cut them in half with you know, a saw or an ax. And it just created some really poor impurities and was very hard to distill. So they switched to American Crystal Sugar. Bruzov says the sugar beets give the vodka a unique, sweet taste. It doesn't smell like a standard vodka that has oftentimes that kind of abrasive quality that almost goes up through your nose and kind of burns a bit. The taste is good. It's, it's a higher end vodka. Mark Nyquist grows sugar beets for American Crystal near Moorhead. He says it's exciting to be part of this. It's great. We're always looking to tap into some niche markets, and that would be an opportunity for us loads to do that. Although this is usually their biggest sales season, COVID has taken a toll on their sales and tasting events. But Bruzoff raises a toast to the future of beet vodka. This is a really subtle vodka um, that, that has this nice vanilla, peppery finish uh, when you sip it. And I think that's a credit to the sugar beet to this unique uh, local Minnesota crop that we're using. In Moorhead, this is Rose Dunn for Ag Week. Beet vodka can be found at several liquor stores around the region and also online. It retails for about $30. An artisan cheese company in southeast Minnesota is growing. Cannon Bell's Cheese recently broke ground on its own cheese plant in Cannon Falls. The company is owned by three friends who started experimenting with cheese making in their kitchens eight years ago. They've been making cheese at the University of Minnesota once a month, but the quantity is limited to about a thousand pounds each time. And we sell out every month, so we can't grow because we're not going to go a market to a store and then we don't have the cheese to sell them. So we're kind of stuck with where we are until we can get our plant built. They make four kinds of cheddar, a gouda, eight flavors of cheese curds, and in 2017, the Cannon Bell's Queso Fresco won first place from the American Cheese Society in the Mexican Cheese Division. Three girls from Minnesota won the Mexican Cheese <laughs> Division. That was really important actually for us in our business. It gave us some credibility when we were just starting out and um, it helped us in our marketing then and getting into stores. The Cannon Bells are hoping to move into their new plant next summer. Coming up on Ag Week TV, we'll continue our market discussions with a look at livestock. Schedule an uptime inspection for your equipment with the Case IH service professionals at your local Titan Machinery. Our Case IH certified service technicians have the training, experience, and genuine Case IH parts to ensure your equipment is ready for next season. Planting and harvesting windows are short. Have confidence in your equipment's performance with a Titan Machinery multi-point uptime inspection. Titan Machinery, your local Case IH service leader. At Superior Grain Equipment, we're committed to quality and service, offering you the best in grain storage and dryers for any size operation. Our experts will work with you to determine the most efficient and economical storage solution for your needs. We help protect your bottom line and your future with the industry's best bins and warranties. Make the superior choice for protection today and tomorrow with Superior Grain Equipment. 
Now is the best time to plan for your 2021 farm equipment needs. North Dakota-based Summers Manufacturing is currently offering early order savings. Take advantage of big savings on North America's broadest tillage line, including the Super Colder Samurai and the innovative VRT Renegade, as well as the best-built, best-backed land rollers in the industry. Talk to your Summers dealer today or go to summersmfg.com to learn more about early order savings available on all Summers equipment. Challenges. We all face them at some time. But it seems that egg has seen its fair share over the past few years. Has your farming operation been able to stand the challenges? If not, maybe it's time to talk to the risk management specialist at Martinson Egg. We can help you make the sound decisions to help your operation weather the storm. Martinson Egg, your one-stop shop for crop insurance, livestock insurance, and marketing. We are here to take your operation to the next level. Go beyond the headlines with an Egg Week membership. Get in-depth agribusiness reporting, original farm and ranch stories, and fact-based research for the most comprehensive ag news in the upper Midwest. Experienced ag journalists bring you exclusive ag news, insights, and policy updates you won't find anywhere else. Become a member today and get unlimited access to Ag Week and Ag Week TV. Our weather went out in 2020 like a lamb, but what's ahead for the new year? Here's our agri weather outlook. Not a lot of moisture this year, especially a late to summer going through the fall and now going through the first uh, few weeks here of win or winter here. And overall, as we take a look at the precipitation, we're about three inches uh, below across parts of central and eastern North Dakota for the year, about one to two inches below across uh, parts of South Dakota, parts of north uh, central uh, Minnesota here. And again, it's been rather on the drier side lately, and we're going to continue this trend. It looks like right on to the uh, first part of January as we begin the new year of 2021. Here's a look at our temperature outlook throughout the first week of January, January 3rd through the 9th. We're going to have the, our, our jet stream that's going to build just to the north of us, and that's going to allow some above average temperatures to, to kind of work their way up into the north across the northern tier uh, of the northern plains and the upper Midwest. And we're looking at temperatures on a few days getting at or above that 32 degree mark. In fact, would not be surprised if parts of the western parts of the Dakotas uh, reach up into those lower 40s for a few days. Days. And as we take a look at this temperature trend here overall, again, we'll see that mild or weather through the first half of this upcoming week. But I do expect our jet stream to break down somewhat as we go throughout the middle part of the week. And that'll introduce some cooler weather into our area. Nothing too significantly cold, but nonetheless, uh, some temperatures back uh, down into the uh, 20s, maybe a few teens uh, for daytime highs. And that trend will continue right on into this uh, next upcoming Saturday. As far as precipitation is concerned through this first week in January. Overall, the moisture is going to be centered across the Pacific Northwest. Uh, for our area, the Dakotas uh, in northern Minnesota here, just a very small chance of an isolated uh, snow shower coming our way over the next week. Otherwise, it's going to be pretty much on the drier side. Very comfortable outside. And as we go into middle January, here we are January 10th through the 16th. Again, we'll see that jet stream mainly dropping its way south of our area. And that'll mean temperatures a little bit more seasonal down to the teens and 20s, but still uh, no signs of true cold weather. And overall, our precipitation outlook as uh, we go into this uh, middle part of January, uh, kind of equal chances for precipitation across the lower 48. Still tracking above average moisture for the uh, Pacific Northwest here. And again, they could really use that moisture as well across the parts of the Midwestern states and Great Lakes area for our region locally, the Dakotas and Minnesota, Eastern Montana. As we go throughout the middle parts of January, more of the same as uh, we have going forward as a small chance of some snow uh, showers heading our way. Once again, no major snowstorms still uh, really on the horizon for our area locally. So what we're tracking again, no sign of those cold, cold uh, temperatures here. Uh, not seeing any signs of sub-zero high temperatures for daytime highs. And again, we're going to have somewhat of a mild January, I think, going forward over the next uh, 30 days here. And then as we go throughout mid-January, again, just a very small snow chance heading our way through the next couple weeks. Challenges. We all face them at some time. But it seems that egg has seen its fair share over the past few years. Has your farming operation been able to stand the challenges? 
If not, maybe it's time to talk to the risk management specialist at Martinson Egg. We can help you make the sound decisions to help your operation weather the storm. Martinson Egg, your one-stop shop for crop insurance, livestock insurance, and marketing. We are here to take your operation to the next level. Steffes Group, selling land and the equipment to farm it since 1960. If you're interested in selling or have questions about our auction process, head to our website at steffesgroup.com to contact us at any one of our four locations located throughout the Midwest. You can also visit and subscribe to our YouTube channel to view all of our auction previews and recaps to stay up to date on the market in your area. This off-season's downtime is the perfect chance to get ready for spring with North Star Egg's lineup of quality farm equipment. We carry Meridian Seed Express bulk tenders for seed handling in the field, Batco conveyors for moving grain and seed at the farm, plus Meridian Grain Max hopper bins for quality storage at great prices. We've also got high output, easy to operate Valmar fertilizer spreaders ready to go. Visit northstar-egg.com or stop by our new location off I-94 in Tower City, North Dakota to see our full lineup. Now is the best time to plan for your 2021 farm equipment needs. North Dakota-based Summers Manufacturing is currently offering early order savings. Take advantage of big savings on North America's broadest tillage line, including the Super Colder Samurai and the innovative BRT Renegade, as well as the best-built, best-backed land rollers in the industry. Talk to your Summers dealer today or go to summersmfg.com to learn more about early order savings available on all Summers equipment. We're going to talk today about a revolutionary auto steer product that you guys have developed. We back one of these things in, it'll drain a 40 acre patch just within hours. And what can you tell us about what dairy farmers do to make sure that their animals are happy? Their care is our primary concern. Is there still time for producers to get storage bins up? Absolutely. We still can definitely get something up and ready for corn harvest. Twenty twenty was a brutal year for livestock markets hit by COVID demand slowdowns and supply chain disruptions. While they've recovered off the lows, what's ahead? Pat von Church joins me and we talk first about the cattle supply to start twenty twenty one. We finally sort of turned the corner as it relates to uh, uh, no longer expanding the, the herd year over year. In the last cattle on feed report um, helped us support that theory. But in, in terms of, of backed up cattle, I think we got ourselves as current um, as we wanted to. Demand has held up quite well in the beef sector, surprisingly enough. And what do you see going ahead, especially as we start maybe getting the vaccine in place? So hopefully I would expect to see some better economic activity as we work through 2021. Uh, should be good for food service trade, should be good for beef demand overall. So what about processing disruptions? Do we have it all worked out? Good, keep our fingers crossed, but I, I uh, uh, no question that we're in better shape today than we were last spring. So do you have some price projections for cattle as we move maybe into first or even second quarter? would still uh, target that mid uh, uh, one, uh, 120 area or so uh, on April cattle as a possibility with the combination of a little bit tighter supplies as we go through through Q1 and uh, pretty good demand as we rebound that economic activity in the uh, food service sector. There should be some opportunities for a little bit better uh, chances than what we've got right now. So what about the hog supply fourth quarter obviously that's where the biggest numbers were as we move into first quarter what do you see for the supply situation you know we've really been on a on a 10-year kick on uh, on uh, building the uh, the hog herd in north america and I, I i i'm hopeful that we're able to change that trend as we work through uh, and into 2021 Let's talk about the demand side first on exports, because it looks like we're going to have a record year for pork exports, in part because of China's robust demand. But they're rebuilding their hog herd at a very fast pace after ASF. So what is that going to mean for the U.S.? Very aggressive uh, rebuilding of the swine herd in China. There's still a lot of question, Michelle, in terms of how uh, successful they're going to be in, in rebounding and building their hog herd and, and uh, uh, with, without a vaccine available for ASF. Um, and so I suspect as we go through 2021, there's going to be, it's going to be a little bit of a roller coaster there. So what is your price outlook starting off 2021? 
we continue to see this premium structure where the back months are higher priced than the front months. The hedging opportunity for 2021 has been running uh, 10 to $12 better than what we've experienced in the spot market this year and four or five dollars better than what we've experienced the three years prior to this one. And so um, I do think there's some opportunities there to transfer risk. Still ahead, we'll reveal the winners of our Ag Week photo contest. Schedule an uptime inspection for your equipment with the Case IH service professionals at your local Titan Machinery. Our Case IH certified service technicians have the training, experience, and genuine Case IH parts to ensure your equipment is ready for next season. Planting and harvesting windows are short. Have confidence in your equipment's performance with a Titan Machinery multi-point uptime inspection. Titan Machinery, your local Case IH service leader. If you have a basement waterproofing or structural emergency, Safe Basements North is here to help. Our team of basement repair professionals will find the cause of the problem and work with you to develop a permanent solution. Safe Basements North is following CDC recommendations and is here to help keep your home and family safe. For a free consultation, go to safebasementsnorth.com and take advantage of our 12-month no interest, no payments offer. I'm Jesse Treble and peace of mind is a safe basement. For Ag Week, this is Mikkel Pates at Watertown, South Dakota. We'll look at the positive impacts that dairy can have on the community. A Minnesota couple has put a grain bin to a new use. Spoiler alert, it's not grain. This elaborate system of tubing with the downhill slope is how Maplewood State Park gathers sap to make syrup. Thanks for joining us for this week's edition of Ag Week TV. Remember, for all your ag news, go to agweek.com or follow us on Facebook and Twitter as well. I'm Jenny Garth, and as a mother of three, I know kids worry about a lot of things. Getting enough food to eat shouldn't be one of them. But here in America, that is a real worry for one in five children. Even though we are one of the most food-rich countries in the world, 15 million children don't know where their next meal is coming from. This is unacceptable, and something the Feeding America nationwide network of food banks is working to solve. Instead of accepting that our country lets billions of pounds of surplus food go to waste every year, Feeding America has made it their mission to help families in need by rescuing this food. Through food pantries and meal programs, the nationwide network of food banks provides more than three billion meals, serving virtually every community in the United States, including yours. Join me in supporting Feeding America and your local food bank by visiting feedingamerica.org. Together, we can solve hunger. Together, we're Feeding America. During November and December, Ag Week asked readers and viewers to submit their favorite photos for our Beauty of Agriculture photo contest. Voting took place on Facebook and Instagram. Third place went to Kelly Loren for this shot of snow falling on an old barn. The second place winner was Tony Loomer of Fergus Falls, Minnesota for his harvest shot. And the winner was Kelsey Wolf of Blooming Prairie, Minnesota for this spectacular shot of a rainbow centered over a harvesting combine. Thanks for watching this week's edition of Ag Week TV. Remember, for all your ag news, go to agweek.com, and you can follow us on Facebook and Twitter as well. Have yourself a great and safe week.